All right. Welcome back to the show. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And that's where you are, Kevin. <laughs> All right. We're really good at intros, <laughs> as you can probably tell. Right. Nice. We're amazing at them. Nice, uh, nice, we've nice. switched things up a little bit today. It's fair to say, right, isn't it, Robin? We've yeah. gone back to the old recipes, right? Because they seem to work a lot better, let's be honest. So uh, we've also got a bit of a new format where I know we've had guests on. They work really well, and they've been great for the community. But we're also going to try and get these, like, half an hour sessions in every month right to do something technical teach folk stuff right so hopefully you enjoy them hopefully you like the new concept it's a bit more concise it's probably going to overrun now that i've said that right we're already late anyway because of me but that's where we're at where we're at right so today we're going to be doing a kubernetes like local lab home lab whatever you want to call it right with with your laptop with your workstation and it's my own simplistic blend, right, of how this is going to work, right? What, what has worked for me on my journey learning how to, you know, start using Kubernetes, et cetera. Have you got anything else to add, Robin? Well, this is the first one in, in what we call Pathway to AKS, right? Yeah. So we want to, you know, lay the path for people to start getting comfortable with Kubernetes, start diving into AKS. So next month, I'll do a technical session, right? Now I'm, you know, committing to it, Kev. So next month I will do a, a technical session uh, where we deploy a AKS cluster using Terraform. And then we're going to build on top of that by adding security features, role-based access control, uh, Active Directory authentication, you know, stuff like that. Maybe some GitOps. But, you know, step-by-step step, trying to expose people to all these different uh, components. Um, I think it should be fun. So, yeah. It's going to be awesome. You know, that's it. Um, yeah, if you like what we do, don't forget to like and subscribe. It will help us out. And if you have any questions or anything along the way, then let us know. And we're back on StreamYard again. So hopefully this will <laughs> this will be a better experience. No lag, no awkward silences, well, except for the intro. And, you know, <laughs> shall I pull your screen up, Gavin? I think it might be a good idea, right? Let's yeah, get this yeah. rolling. All right. This should be fine. Yeah, boom. There we are. Right. Just bear with me. Make sure I've got my life on order. <laughs> right. So, Kubernetes. Keep there. So you've done it already, right? Kubernetes development lab, right? Home lab. Um, my approach to this, and my approach to pretty much any technology, right, is to try and keep it as simple as possible. It's a cliche, I know. But what happens when you get too many engineers in the room? It's like having too many cooks in the kitchen, right? S -s -s Spoils the recipe, right? So this should work for most folks. Um, it's targeted at people that are starting to learn or are, you know, are wondering where they should go, especially on their Azure journey as well, right? And that's what Robin mentioned before. So we'll get into all the good stuff on the next session. But primarily, we're going to be looking at, you know, using Docker. I'm going to be looking at Minikube as, Mini as well, right? So I'm going to break that down. Can you see the next slide? Yeah. Absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. Awesome source. Right. So I've got a bit, of a bit of an agenda. We've got workstation prerequisites. Now, we did a session last year called setting your workstation up for infrastructure as a code, right, for Azure development, right? And that included... Um, installing the baseline tools um, such as Windows Subsystem for Linux, uh, infrastructure as a code tooling such as Terraform and Bicep, etc. as your CLI. If, before you go through with this, go and check that video out first, right? Uh, we'll post a link out to that video. There's also a GitHub repo with a README, right, to walk you through setting up your workstation, right, um, to get it up and running. Um, you also need to... Um, Make sure that your your device, whatever you're using, or if you're spinning something up in the cloud, right, that it, it supports nested virtualization, which is really important for the WSL element to this, right? So once you've got the prerequisites out of the way, we will go through what is Docker, right? So why are we using Docker? Well, Docker was there first, right? It's also a supporter of the OCI, so the Open Container Initiative, right? And this, we're going to install Docker, right? And this is all on a Windows workstation, by the way. 
We're going to install Docker because it runs our daemon, right? So we will then use Minikube to do the Kubernetes piece. And they will work together, right, to give you your basically your Kubernetes platform, right? So you get the best of both worlds. Um, we're going to be installing um, kubectl as well, which is going to be crucial. Anyone that's doing any kind of Kubernetes exam, right? I know you will put the aliases in there, right? <laughs> K, mm. whatever it may be, describe. Mm. kubectl is where you start, right? That's how you interact with your cluster, no matter where it is. If it's in the cloud, if it's on-prem, if it's locally on your machine. We're going to touch on Helm. Um, we're going to install Helm. Not necessarily going to use it, but basically Helm is a tool that helps you define and install and upgrade your applications in Kubernetes. So as most basic, Helm is a template and engine, right? Which creates Kubernetes manifests, right? We're going to install it. So it's out there for future use, but as part of the demo today, we're not actually going to use it. Then it doesn't need no introduction, but we're going to be using VS Code, right? The, uh, the mighty VS Code, the IDE developed by Microsoft, right? And we're going to be using extensions in there. And we're going to interact with our cluster in there as well. And then lastly, we're just going to do a simple hello world test, right? So we're going to go through that. Well, it's a lot of ground to cover in 25 minutes. I've, I've scripted <laughs> most of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. So as I talked about the workstation prerequisites, right? Hopefully using Windows 11. This is not saying it can't be done in Linux or anything else like that or Mac OS, but this is targeted this is right at Windows users. Um, so using Windows 11 22H2, if you can get hold of that or upgrade to that, it's going to do you well. Um, so you know, it's going to have integrated Windows Terminal, uh, the WSL level as well, right? PowerShell 7, grab it. It's there just in case, right? Um, just to get you up and running, right? So get the latest version of that. And then Windows Subsystem for Linux. Now, it may be, you know, it's no secret that I'm a bit of a fan of this. For me, when I'm learning something, especially like Kubernetes, right, I want to be close to the ecosystem as possible. Now, primarily, we're going to be doing the Linux containers, right? So getting used to that ecosystem and the commands and everything else, right? Having It's like the best of both worlds, having a Windows operating system, but then having direct access to a, a Linux instance that's embedded in the operating system as well, right? So prerequisite of this is WSL. Again, go and check out the Streaming Clouds episode on Azure Infrastructure, infrastructure as a Code Workstation set for Windows. Goes through all the steps of getting you up and running with that. Okay. Awesome. Do we have a start? repo? A repo as well? Where we can yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's yeah. a repo as that, right? So... We'll post a link out to the repo as well. So there's nice. a GitHub readme to go through that as well with all the commands to get you up and running. But nice. if you're like me, you get a bit nervous sometimes, right? When you're trying something new, then go and watch the episode as well in the video, right? To point you in the right direction. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing, Robin, so I can get my life in order in the background. Oh, right? yeah, so, sure. Let me, uh, so it's gone now. We can reorganize. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh nice. Right, so. By the way, my dog is walking around here somewhere. So if you hear oh, something. Bobby, then... Bobby's the mascot, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. So, do, 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 do. let me present, share screen. Don't go away. And most of these tools, except then, you know, uh, Windows Terminal and WSL are available for Mac as well, right? So this is interchangeable. Yeah, it, this is just focused at like Windows folks, right? But you can go and apply the same tool sets, right? On Mac OS, Linux, right? So, you know, Ubuntu, Fedora, you know, Arc, if you're hardcore, right? That kind of thing. So yeah, these tools are completely open source. Um, and they're there to set you up for success, right? So, okay. So the first thing we're going to do is bring up a web browser. Now, I've done a lot of the prerequisites on this, right? So I've got WSL installed. The reason we're doing this in this steps is we're going to be using the Kubernetes extension in VS Code. So we've got to have certain prerequisites involved, right, to ensure that it's running 
properly and you're not getting any any messages, any error alerts, that kind of thing, right? So the first thing we're going to do is get Docker for Windows here. So we'll post the link out, but if you go to the doc, docs.docker.com forward slash desktop forward slash install forward slash Windows hyphen install, you can download Docker for desktop. And as you can see here in the system requirements, right? That Docker actually prefers a WSL2 backend, right? So again, as I mentioned here, right, with the certain versions of Windows, certain version, version of Windows 10, et cetera, which need to be supported. Um, again, kind of processor you need, the amount of RAM, et cetera, and again, nested virtualization support on your BIOS is crucial. So let's download this. Hopefully I've got speedy internet. I'm using the Azure Backbone today. This is a VM in Azure, right? So yeah, well, the Azure Backbone had some issues today, so I'm not sure if that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> if that's a good thing or not. But <laughs> I don't know about this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Right. So I talked to the support uh, Microsoft support engineer today and he was not having a good day, to be honest. Oh man. Great, great place to start, though, for career-wise. Oh, yeah. Well, this guy is rocking it. So, uh, yeah. All right. So I bet you're like five instances of Docker are going to fire up now saying, you want me to install? <laughs> I have no idea, Sander. Issues, no. <laughs> yeah, like, I was right. I'm being impatient, <laughs> look. Yes. All right, so we have Windows 11. It's a VM yep. in Azure. Are you Correct. using a specific VM type? I am. I'm using a, the cheapest one that I could get away with, right, for nested virtualization, <laughs> right, because they start getting a bit beefy at that point. But I'm using a D4S V3. Okay. And the V3 is then nested equals nested virtualization? Or yeah, no? yeah, we actually have... Um, let me just get rid of this. We actually have a like a matrix of VMs that are support nested virtualization, mm. and they get pretty big, oh. right? I'll have to dig that out. So configuration, it's quite simple, the Docker installation. We're going to use WSL instead of Hyper-V. Now, you can use Hyper-V, but again, preference for me is using WSL2. Um, you know, we're going to add a, add a shortcut to the desktop if you want. So we're going to click OK. I'm going to start installing Docker. It's going to ask me to log out now. Mm. I've just remembered. All right, so VM, V3, nested virtualization VM. Correct. Installing Docker. Docker Correct. will install WSL? No, I've already, just, I've already deployed WSL2 at this ah, point. Okay. That's right. a prerequisite, but great, great for clarifying. If you're using a local device, then go and check out your BIOS to see if virtualization is enabled on the CPU. That's the number one thing that catches folks out, right? I don't know why it's disabled by default, right? But it is. It's just like it's not enabled. So, all right. And I'm trying to remember. Did we install WSL in uh, in that? Uh, yes. Um, yes the the other did. video that you're referring to that I posted in the chat, right? This yeah. one. That's the All one. Right. Okay. So we're complete. We're still complete then, yeah. For sure. <laughs> nice. We have quite some people turning up, by the way. It's great to see some familiar faces or familiar names, right? Yeah, don't forget to say hello. No, no, everybody's saying hello. I can hear. Yeah. Christina's here. Right? Hey, Chris. Bill is here. Gil. Uh, Ankit <laughs> is here. Um, Xander is here, right? Hey. And in the meantime, can you please brief us what will be on the agenda for today? So, Ankit, we're installing um, Docker. Installing, We're using Minikube to bootstrap like a single node Kubernetes cluster inside Docker. For sure. And then we'll start to interact with, uh, with that cluster that's running inside of Docker uh, using kubectl or kubectl, if you will. Um, and install Helm, but you know, Helm is like a templating or like a packaging 
tool, if you will, um, to, to package your application and distribute them and taking care of, you know, prerequisites, dependencies, whatever. And what else do we have on the agenda? Visual Studio Code, probably some extensions, I think, and then we're deploying an app. Uh, You're going to love this. What's the worst thing that can happen to a presenter during the live stream? A battery of your mouse? Yes. Mm, nice. <laughs> Bear with me. Oh, God. People at Microsoft <laughs> are going to be cursing my name. Uh, supposed to be a veteran, Kev. Right. Oh, well, we're humans, man. This is live stream. It's, it's allowed, you know. There we go. Backup mouse. H A. Uh, right. Well, this so is I'm just taking realized, quite some time. I know, yeah. It's, there we go. It's done. Okay. So I've just realized. Okay. Close and log out, right? So the screen might go blank. Okay. You always have a beautiful background, man. I'm not sure where you get them. But... Yeah, yeah. I just into pictures, just logging back in. You know, well, you're staring at it all day, right? So make it pretty. Hey, I like the picture. Is that yours? Yeah, definitely. What a classic. When he came barging in with, or he or she came bar barging in with, with you know, a deep quote. <laughs> employ, your, em, employ your time in improving yourself by other, other men's writings so that you shall gain easily what others have labored hard for. Yeah. Right, okay. So I'm just going to go through and accept this. Now, there's two. There's a caveat to Docker, right? So mm -hmm. I think it's if you're over 250 users, you have to have the Enterprise Edition, but there is a Community Edition as well that you can you can download for free. Right. Um, but for home lab stuff, you should be you should be good. Right. So Docker's starting. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and look at Minikube now, right? So we've got our Docker installed. Hopefully this is a lot quicker than, than Docker was installing. So right. So if you go to this link here, we'll post it as well. Minikube.sigs.k8.io forward slash docs forward slash start tells you everything you need to know to get up and starting with Minikube. So Minikube is going to be, like we were saying, it's going to bootstrap our Kubernetes uh, like one node instance, right? Tells you the requirements here. Um, the operating systems, again, like, like we said before, Robin, it's like Linux, Mac OS, or Windows. And how we're going to get started, right? So here's Docker again. Go away. So, <laughs> so we're going to select Linux, right? And why are we going to select Linux? Because we're using Windows Subsystem for Linux, right? So oh, I geez. bring up my terminal. I know you, it blows your mind every time I show you this. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but look, yeah, da -da, yeah. right? It's going to be yeah. local. Oh, yeah, it's going to be local. Right? Yeah, even though the session is called Pathway to AKS, means that we're ramping up towards AKS, right? For and sure. it starts with getting comfortable with Kubernetes and, you know, um, building clusters can be expensive. So, you know, having a home lab to you know, play with is, is crucial, I think, especially when you're just getting started. So, so yeah. Let's get going. And uh, Ankit, this is not a bad idea. We can set something up. I mean, the food. Yeah, man. I'd go there for the food. Yeah, and the people. And the people. Absolutely. Right. So we've just okay. installed Minikube. Just a couple of commands, right? So I've just grabbed, because I'm using Ubuntu, there's a binary download, right? It's pretty universal, or a Debian package, an RPM package, right? That you're if you're using like Red Hat, Fedora, or Rocky OS, or whatever, right? So Linux x86 64 bit, right? And I want the stable one, right? I don't want any surprises at this point. So what I noticed is because we're using Docker, you've got to do some configuration, right, to get Minikube up and running. So you've got to add your current user as well to the Minikube. 
uh, user mod group. So there's a command for that, and we'll publish this. So what we've got is we need to configure Minikube for Docker permissions. So please let please let my Minikube instance speak to my Docker instance, right? So it's configure Minikube, Docker permissions, sudo, user mod, ag, Docker, then my user, which is a variable, right? And then a new group, Docker, right? So I can hit enter on that. Oh, it's not there. Right. Oh, well, you should remove the it. configure Minikube Docker permissions before the sudo. Probably. Right? Probably. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably put a note in there. This is what it does. Yeah. Do you know what? It'd be probably good to remove the speech bookmarks as well, right? <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be one command. <laughs> All right, nice. There we go. Now it's working. Boom. Thanks for pointing out, Robin. Happy to help, yeah. So we've set that. We're also going to mini mini cube works by um, using drivers, right, for its Kubernetes instance. So what we're going to do is tell it to use the Docker driver. Otherwise, we'll run into problems down the road. Oh, yeah, it's not so supported. Oh. Do you know what? More fingers and thumbs today, right? Helps Thanks, if you man. spell things correctly, right? Yeah, just take a breath. All right. It's all good. So only two hundred people are watching. No it's problem. okay. No. It's okay. We've got this. <laughs> right. So now we're going to start Minikube, right? So we've set the driver, etc. I think it's as simple as Yeah, Minikube start, right? Yeah, man. Boom. Should start doing loads of nice and wonderful things now, right? Yeah. So it's downloading Kubernetes. It's using the Docker driver, right, with root privileges. Security will go crazy, right? But <laughs> don't tell anyone. No, 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 I'm not going to tell anyone. But that's a good place to start, right? It's using the Docker engine instead. And we're running this all inside of a Linux instance on my Windows PC. That's what I love about this, right? Like that one step closer. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Christina is dropping gems in the chat. Right? What's she saying? What we got? She, she agrees with that. This is a good build up to AKS, right? We play with containers and Kubernetes locally. As a beginner, you will need to get hands on with containers and Kubernetes in general. And for that, any cluster distribution like Minikube or Docker's Kubernetes component would work nicely. And Last but not least, the core concepts are the same as for the managed Kubernetes service like AKS. Oop. No, no, no. Oh, this is... <laughs> well, all good. No, no. You're all, all good. good, Chris. You're making me look good, right? So I uh, appreciate that. But no, you know, we've seen the joke on the internet. Well, it worked on my PC, right? That's the whole point of Kubernetes, right? So... So we're just waiting for this to install. Well, that's a question mark. Is it waiting for some input or what is that? No. Oh, there we go. It worked in my container. <laughs> nice. So now we're creating the Docker container. Yeah, and this will be a single node cluster. Yeah, right? Like Normally, you would right. have a control plane instance or sure. control plane node. Oh, that's that's confusing. A control plane and a worker uh, node. Right? Control yeah, plane I think... takes takes care of all the you know all your cluster operations, and there are certain yeah multiple components in your controller taking care of that. We won't go into uh, into these components right now, but. What this will, what's happening now is that it's going to be one container, and that one is your control plane, and that's your node, your worker node that will run your container. You can even run containers on your control plane, right? But um, it's bad practice. So, you know, teaching myself stuff over the years, I've learned that you need to try and control the blast radius, right? 
because mm. you can get sometimes you you you, you know you, you're there at, it's victory but you learn by breaking stuff right that's just the way it works so having this locally is a great place to start right get yourself set up and again you know mm. we want to get to using a cloud service provider right and using aks but this is this is a great place to start yeah so og music uh hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, says, I have a Docker installation already, which prompted me to install Kubernetes. Right? It's just a checkbox. Is this different from Minikube? I think there's a different way to do this, right? Yeah, that's that's the thing with Kubernetes, right? It's a, a black hole, rabbit hole, whatever you want to call it. There's like a, like Linux distributions, there's like a thousand ways of doing it, right? So it, it's just a different way. This is just my my personal blend right? To get me the best of both worlds. So we see, let's download an image now. And here and we the, go. And the thing is, you're, you're using your, your Docker engine. You're not using Docker desktop, right? Which then Correct. will use Docker engine as well. So you're, you're removing one, la one layer of abstraction. But it's a good question. Why would one go from Unicube versus just, you know, flipping the switch in the Docker desktop. It's just personal preference for me. I just, I don't know, just it's something that I can get to as close as possible, right? You know, mm. it's personally for me, it's worked. But yeah, you could just use the Docker one as well. So we're going to install, what did you say, kubectl before? Yeah, kubectl yeah, yeah Kube, the guys at yeah. code cloud call it kubectl as well is that like is that the official way of saying it because i just call it no Kube CTL, there's right? there's no and i call it kubectl there's no right. official way it's like a preference kind of thing like azure or azure i can, I can even pronounce the english version but you know there are different ways to do it <laughs> so if you go to the kubernetes site again we'll post the link we're going to install kubectl for linux right so there's a way of installing the binary, using the package manager or using other package managements, right? So if we scroll down, because I started doing it like this, but we've got a Debian based or Debian based, right? Um, yeah. Package. So what we're going to do is just run these commands. I'm going to... Uh, Backup mouse is... Uh... <laughs> having some issues i'm on a roll today right ah, so it's no adding value anyway so it's uh don't worry about it it's good good stuff just running it like a meta update on my yeah just gonna go back and grab that other command for speed yeah we do need to work on our timing because we're never going to make this in 30 minutes we're not going to do it in 30 minutes no, no, no. But that was the idea, right? And I have a customer call on the hour. <laughs> oh, should be done by then. <laughs> All right, so Xander asked a question. Is it preferable to deploy it on Azure or does a local laptop installation work just as well? Yeah, I, I, I have it on my local laptop. The reason I haven't done it on my local laptop, right, is because I've it's my development machine. I've got it all set up and customized. So what I wanted to give you was a vanilla, raw, out-of-the-box kind of walkthrough on this. So... This is, you know, you should be doing it on your local machine, right? It's a local home lab. You'd be able to take it anywhere, that kind of thing. Nice. All right. So we're going to just grab the Google Cloud public signing key. This is what allows us to download it, right? Sorry, which cloud? <laughs> There's only one Sorry, cloud. Man. No, I won't get you into trouble. <laughs> All clouds are great. All clouds yeah. are great. So we've added that to our key ring as well. And what we're going to do now is right. grab this. So, yeah, I won't distract you, but... What is all this? What are all these steps doing? So basically what we're doing is we have to tell our Linux instance that where the kubectl repo is or where the package is, right? So I'm using the native package manager, right? For the Ubuntu installation, right? So you have to say, 
here are the certificates to access this resource because it's verified, right? Here's the keys. This is where you go to look for it, right? You, you're basically telling your operating system that it's a trusted repo, right, to download the package. And then once that's done, we just do a sudo apt-get install hyphen y, which is yes, kubectl. All right. And sudo in this case is super user do, right? That's so right, that means yeah. they have the uh, permissions to install um, packages, like a so Linux thing. And then I believe there's a command to test that it's installed properly. It's like, there we go. If we just verify, it's kubectl hyphen version. Plus so, info. In this case. Gives us some basic. Yeah. Uh, all right. Awesome sauce. All right. Now we're going to install Helm. Like I said, we're going to touch on Helm. We're going to install it, but we're not going to actually do anything with it, right? Mm -hmm. It's just to get you prepared for the next stages. So if you go to... They're all the same, right? They're all laid out the same. That's what I like about these websites. But if you go to... Uh, helm.sh forward slash docs forward slash intro forward slash install i'll talk you through the steps of installing helm right so as before there's a binary release it's from a script and then there's through package managers right so if you've got homebrew again you can use homebrew on linux as well right it's probably an easier way chocolatey for windows scoop for windows and then apt for ubuntu right so luckily i've got everything here that we need Nice. So you just copy this. Again, it's going to be the same thing. Where do I go to find Helm? How do I install Helm, right? Where's the repositories, right? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we'll paste that in. Boom. All right, so we got our cluster running now. Yeah. Kubernetes cluster on the Docker engine, bootstrapped by Minikube. You installed Cube CTL, so we can interact with with the cluster API. Correct. So we can talk to the cluster, right? Just like you have the yep. Azure CLI or the other cloud CLI. And we've just installed Helm, and I've just run Helm in the command line, and it's it's brought up the binary, right? It's running the executable, right? So it's there. So the next stage. So we need to install VS Code. Mm. Now, I have a bit of a cheat for this. Right? So, have you heard of Winget? You not heard of Winget yet? Winget, yeah. Yeah. The Windows so like, Packet Manager, right? Correct. So, if you're using the, one of the latest versions of Windows 11, you get Winget installed, right? So, what I've got here is a command winget install Microsoft Visual Studio code, mm -hmm. right? Sweet. If you if you do winget space search and then the name of something, it will go off and search the package repositories, right, to find the software that you're looking for. Nice. It's pretty cool. So I'm just going to install VS Code now by running this command. All right, and this is PowerShell. You're not doing this in WS yeah, yeah. Code. Now just to flip back. Sorry, we've gone back from Linux. Mm -hmm. Back to PowerShell, right? Because we need to install okay. VS Code on our desktop. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Hi, Dethami. Um, well, happy you like it. Uh, this stream will be available, right? So while we streaming, it's recorded. And after the stream, it will be available um, yeah, instantaneously. And you don't need a beefed up laptop to uh, to set this up. You probably wouldn't get away with four gig of RAM. That's all I'm saying. You probably need a bit more. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, actually. Define beefed up, right? <laughs> well, I mean, 16 gig as a, as a minimum, right? <laughs> 16. I mean, how much has your Mac got, Robin? Uh, 32, I think. That's, uh, that's just a smidge. 
smidge, right? Yeah, but yeah. Mac OS is a little bit better at manage memory management than other operating systems. That's a contentious, contentious argument, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, but um, <laughs> it's the same if you were trying to run a hypervisor, right, on your local device. That's probably the best yeah. way to describe it, right? Well, we can check how many, uh, how much memory is being consumed by our container, right? Which is yeah. running Kubernetes. So we'll go. So we'll go to start, right? And there it is in all its glory, right? Okay, so we're going to flip over to VS Code now. Minimize this. And here's VS Code out of the box, right? It's a fresh install. Now, there's a couple of things we need to do, right? And so we've set up this instance. We've set up like a hypervisor. We've got WSL2 installed. We're using the Docker engine. We've got Minikube installed, right? So those are all the prerequisites, right, to get up and run into this point. Um, but there's a couple of things that we need to do, right? So first thing is we've got to install some extensions. Now, extensions in VS Code are like uh, interfaces, right, for certain capabilities. For instance, if you're uh, developing for Terraform, you'd use the Terraform extension, that kind of thing, right? Or if you were using PowerShell, you'd have the PowerShell extension in there, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to here to extensions. And because we're using WSL2, I'm just going to type in WSL. And like that, right? Microsoft has an extension for it. And you're wondering why, right? So... At the moment, VS Code doesn't know we have a WSL instance running in the back end, so it doesn't know how to interface with it, right? So what we're going to do is just click on install. Right, so now what's happened is it's installed the WSL extension, right, within VS Code. Now, if we go to the bottom left, we've got something here that's popped up in green, right? It's called open a remote window. So if we click on that, it now brings down a drop-down box, and it's it's like, do you want to open up a WSL instance, right? So if we click New WSL, I'm just going to close the window behind it so it doesn't confuse folks. If we look mm -hmm. at the bottom left here, it says Opening. And now it's downloading our Ubuntu server that we've deployed locally. So it's starting VS Code in WSL. So it creates like a bridge, right? It's like I'm interfacing with it. I can see it. I can offer. Op, I can, you know, I, I can access the window, not the Linux operating system, right? In the ecosystem there. So instead of creating files within Windows, it's now creating files within my WSL instance, right? So there's a couple of things I want to do. I'm going to bring up a terminal, and as you can see now, it's brought up a Bash terminal, mm -hmm. right? So can you like make we had full before. screen? Can you yeah, make yeah, your with sure. a window? Uh... Yeah, is that better for folks? Yeah. Well, right. I'm, not, I'm not sure if it matters, but I don't know. Maybe it's my OCD. No, no, I think you're right. So now we've got um, we've we've got our terminal, right? So what we're going to do is basically deploy a local Hello World app, right, to make sure our instance is running, right? But we're going to go back to extensions first. And we're going to look for, it's actually there, recommended, right? Sweet. Kubernetes extension developed and deployed in debug, right? And it's maintained by Microsoft. This is what a few months ago when we had Brendan Burns on, he was mentioning this, right? A lot of time and effort's gone into it. So we're going to click on install. Name dropping, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to do it, right? So it's installed some other extensions as part of it, right? It's installed the YAML extension from Red Hat as well, right? Because that's what you're going to be doing all day, right? Is YAML manifest files, right? So getting the right tools for that. So if we click on, now you can see it's installed, right? If we click on Kubernetes here, you can see it's starting to pull information down, right? So we have our mini cube instance, right? have our namespaces like default the cube name node lease etc we have our nodes 
So we go to mini cube, right? So we have stuff like core DNS in there for the DNS service, right? We got the API server, the I'm gonna say this wrong. Is it etc et cd, right? No, that's no. good. Et cd. Yeah, yeah. Do you like that? Not bad for a Windows guy, right? And then we got our proxy and the scheduler and everything else, right? So everything you need, right, to get you up and running. Okay. This might this might not mean anything to people out there at the moment, right? <laughs> Which is understandable. But like I was saying, it's a great place to start, right? It's like a simple, simple setup. So there's a couple of things you can do with Minikube as well, right? You can deploy a dashboard as well, right? To um, to basically see it in a, in a web browser. Oh. And I'm just going to start that up now. So if you run Minikube dashboard, you see here that it's enabled in the dashboard. It's using an image from Docker. So again, you know, the Docker, Docker engine for Accenture. Nice. And it's enabling an add-on in Minikube called the metric server, right? And that's, you know, to circle back on why you should, you know, why you could choose Minikube over, you know, Kubernetes and Docker is that Minikube has a lot of add-ons that you can install with, with you know, just a single command. Yeah. So you can, you know, Minikube space add-ons space enable space ingress, for example, will install an Nginx controller, right? Or what you're doing now, Minikube add-ons enable metrics hyphen server. So there are a lot of pack pre-packaged parts in the Minikube executable that can, you know, alter your cluster or add services, features, etc. So this is outputted a link, right? So if I click on that, and hopefully, fingers crossed, brings up the dashboard, right? Within Kubernetes on my local. This is my local cluster instance running, right? So we've got like cron jobs i mean there's nothing deployed yet right but one thing when things are deployed in here you can come and have a look ingress again there's <laughs> not much to uh but if we go maybe to events so if i go to events here right it's telling me everything that's going on with inside my instance so if you're still not up to speed with the the command line yet you can use this right to sort of give you that gui that representation right of what's going on Oh man, even if you're comfortable with the command line, I use Lens, right? That's a GUI you can use for, <laughs> you know, for your Kubernetes work on a day-to-day -day basis. And even though I know the commands, I can work with the CLI. I just like to click on things, right? That's awesome. Yeah. Right. So we're going to go back to VS Code. I'm just going to X out of this, right? So I'm just going to break this. So now we're going to download this local Hello World app, right, to run locally. It's just a piece of text, right, to say that it's running. And you can see it in a web browser, right, because we want to be able to deploy the image, deploy the app, right, deploy the workload locally. But then we also want to sort of validate it and say we can see it in a web browser, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got one that's already here. So we've got a, so we've got kubectl or kubectl, right, depending on where you're from create deployments right it's a web we've got the image source right so again it's from that other cloud google right but uh it's there from a sample and it's a hello world right so I'm just gonna hit enter on that so we've created a deployment so you know uh web web was created so if we do i'm being tested here yeah is it kubectl get, get gets deployments. deployments yeah, yeah. No tab completion? No. Not yet. Oh. Very nice. There it is. We can see here that our web is ready and is available, right? And also, if we come up here and hit refresh, we can also, it's been seen, it's been created here in the node pool as well, right? And if we click on it, it brings us up the manifest file as well. Sweet. And that's where I like, that's why I like to see the power of this, right? It's like, I click on it, it brings me up the manifest file, right? I can then go back to the command line, right? And can create deployments locally, et cetera. So I think it's pretty cool. The next thing we need to do is we need to expose it as a service, right? On port 8080, right? So what you got to realize when it comes to Kubernetes, right? Um, you've got to expose 
expose the the instance right with particular services be that ssh https http etc so again got another command here and we're going to expose the service right on our deployment which was web right so as you can see there it's returned saying service web was exposed and now we're going to do, 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 do kubectl get service. Oh, I wish it would autocomplete web, right? So it's telling me the name, the deployment, which is web, the node port, right? So that's the local, that's the IP address of the cluster. There's no external IP because it's locally, right? and the ports that it's running on, right? And how long it's been up for. Then we're going to, so now we've deployed it, but like, well, what's the URL, right? I can use to access it. So if we do mini cube space service, space web for the deployment and then hyphen hyphen URL, he says, hopefully, fingers crossed. Brilliant. So it gives us the link, right? to go and look at our hello world. So if we just go and click on this, bring up our web browser again. And voila. Simple, but effective, right? Uh, and, and for me, when I was starting to do all this stuff, it can get really complicated quickly. Do you know what I'm saying, right? So starting off simply and just doing these simple tests, right? Build your confidence and you can go up to the next level. Uh, Chris did one the other the other, the other month, right? It was like cats with an air app and everything else, right? It was pretty, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was pretty out there, right? I quite liked it a lot, right? But like, if you're like, well, I just want to start with the basics, right? See how it works, see how the mechanism works, then you know, um, it this is a great place to start, right? Yeah, and what so I, we what talked I... about. Go on. Sorry, what happened? No, so we talked about AKS as well, how that works, right? So, you know, we imagine a couple of months went by and we wanted to take our image, right, to AKS, right, and deploy it in the in, in the registry or in the instance there. So what I'm just going to show quickly today, because I'm conscious of time, you can actually log into a cloud, right? So I'm going to get the AKS extension so now you can see that the AK the, the Azure Kubernetes service extension is now installed in WSL so does it install if you remote into WSL it will install Visual Studio Code there it will create a bridge and from then on everything that you do just happens in WSL so if you would Correct. go back locally and it could be that you're missing plugins or extension? No, so it, it installs it in the context. Yeah, so if you went back, it would be like, well, I was told to look at WSL. Now you're telling me to look locally in the Windows ecosystem, right? For, mm. So you'd have to reconfigure it, right? All right. So now that we've installed that, we're just going to sign into Azure. I'm just going to do this on another screen. <laughs> you got an AKS uh, cluster running? What? I have, yeah, yeah. Oh, so. man, surprise. <laughs> so. Nice. Just do an MFA. All right, leading by example. Uh, always, always. All right. Cool. You are now signed in and can close this page. So if we go back to here, you can see now it's pulled down all my subscriptions, right? My tenant, right? In Azure. So if I go to Kubernetes dev, I've actually got an instance running there. Right, uh, I can do stuff like merge it into cube config. I can run AKS diagnostics for best practices. I can run AKS Periscope. 
can show it in the Azure portal. So it'll just take me back to the resource, right, et cetera. You know, I can run cube, cube CTL commands, right, against the AKS instance, right, locally from my VS Code instance. Can check stuff out like cube, Kubernetes API health endpoints, manage cluster operations, right? So, and there's one here called inspect the gadget, right? Which looks pretty funky. I haven't tested that out yet. I kind of like that, right? But uh, but yeah. <laughs> but what I'm trying to get at is you start off locally, but then you can progress to AKS, right? Once you've got it to a production ready level. And that's and that's me. Nice man. Yeah. I'm still smiling because of the inspector gadget. Nah, 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 That's nah. pretty cool, man. Somebody have fun creating that. But uh, all right, man. So uh, we did it in like 50 minutes. Yeah, it's not half an hour, right? But uh... <laughs> oh, well. doesn't matter. All right, man. Um, yeah, we'll post a link to the README in the description of the video. Yeah. And yeah, next month I will uh, deploy an AKS cluster using Terraform. Sounds pretty cool. I'm looking forward to that. All right. You want to wrap it up, Gav? Yeah. So again, hopefully you like this video. <laughs> it's been like a, a, a bit, couple of mishaps, the battery, that kind of thing, right? But you know, we got there in the end. But yeah, hopefully this has been useful for folks. Um, I, I know it's been useful for me. And it's a great place to start, right, in your Kubernetes journey, right? So we hope to see you next time. Are you going to say it? Don't be a stranger. I will. I will. You know, I'm just looking at the chat. So uh, no, I'm oh, happy man, The chat's been on it. fire. It's been on fire today. Yeah, so thank yeah, you very yeah, much yeah, for all yeah. your messages. Thanks for yeah. your kind messages. Yeah, Kev. And it's all good, man. We're, we're live streaming anyway. So, you know, mistakes allowed. Um, this is a, um, how do you say that, blame-free um, environment, right? And uh, yeah. oh, what is this difference between deploying with Helm or TF? Well, Helm is for deploying um, applications inside your cluster, and we're going to be using Terraform to deploy the cluster that we then, you know, we can use Helm to deploy uh, applications in the cluster. You can use Terraform for that, you know, to overcomplicate things, but um, but yeah, that's <laughs> that's the difference, right? So Terraform for the infrastructure, and then Helm for a packaged Kubernetes application. And there are really great examples out there as well. So if you start playing around with Prometheus, for example, right, for the yeah, monitoring of your applications and your cluster, you can install Prometheus using a Helm chart. And that chart includes everything, right? So it will create a deployment, it will create services, it will create daemon sets, it will create a lot of other resources that, um, yeah, that, that you need to run that application inside your cluster. Right. And the other benefit as well, if you're a developer um, and you want to distribute out your Kubernetes application, then you can create a Helm chart. And this way, people can really um, quickly, in the best way, onboard their applications to their clusters, you know, with, without writing everything themselves. So, yeah, hopefully that's clear. I think we should do a session about Helm, Kev, in the I future. I think we should. Yeah, I think that'd be a good. I think we should break yeah. it down into the different components, right? And just touch on it and see. Tell, tell folks why All right. it's beneficial. Boom. With that, thanks for watching. And uh, don't be a stranger, right? I need to get used to these new shortcuts. Yeah, let's uh, <laughs> that's the way. All right. See, See you later. Later.